Hey guys, welcome back to Precision Machine Shed. Today what I got for you is my Rockwell Hardness Tester. I've actually had this thing for probably a couple years now and I haven't really shown much for video on it as far as my channel goes, but we're just going to go over it a little bit today and, and uh, show you kind of what I use them for. This is a, and I'm probably going to just slaughter this name, but it's a Lies How High End Testing Rockwell Hardness Tester, model HR-150A. So this does a Rockwell Hardness, and I believe it will also do, uh, it does, so it does Rockwell Hardness B and C scale. Uh, this thing is made in China, it was made approximately in 1998, well it was made in 1998. The guy I bought it from used it in a just a little low production machine shop and he kept the thing covered and only used it a few times so it really hasn't had much use. I've been kind of kicking it around my shop here for the last couple years and as you can kind of see I've got a new shop and it's still in the works but uh, hopefully more to come on that. Let's take a closer look at this thing. Alright before we get too far into this thing, one thing this thing came with was pretty much all the accessories to, to my knowledge packing list, instruction manual, and the inspection record that actually shows that it supposedly is what it says it is. Um, so it's got this little box here, it's got this little ball tester. So it's just a tiny little tester. It's a little round, round nose piece and there's a tiny little divot in the end there. It's just a little divot. So I'm sure I have not used that piece yet, but it also comes with all the little tiny little ball bearings that fit in the end of that, so you can push the ball bearing and do a test with that. It's, I don't know, I'm sure that's a maybe a B-scale thing. Um, the V-block that goes into the screw, it's got the standard one inch anvil on there, and then a couple screwdrivers. And it's got the big platen plate, whatever you want to call it, that goes on there for larger items. And then it also came with, I can get this back in there, five different hardness testing blocks. So each one of these blocks, this one's 23.2 met, uh, it's inscribed in there, HRC. And this one's been used a couple times. And some of these have been used a few times with there's a 38.8, but they really haven't been used that much. 62.2, and they're ground. And I think it goes all the way up to, there's an 82, and it goes up to a 91, I believe. 92.8 hardness, uh, that's pretty hard. So looking at our dial here, the one nice thing about this hardness tester that I noticed a lot of some of the other guys on YouTube, um, granted this is a Chinese made one and I know I would love to have a US made one or a Japanese one even but this works pretty good. Um, this indicator or the dial face will turn so you can zero out your needle once you get it under load. So that's a kind of a nice feature of this particular guy. And then it's also got the little dial so you turn it, we'll go through it here in a minute, but you turn it three times and you get to that little red mark and then you zero it and then you release it and you do your tests. So. And of course here's our anvil with our adjusting screw. It's got kind of just a cheap little cover over it that, you know, does the job. Nothing fancy. Right now there's a diamond, t diamond tip in there. That's what I've been using with the Rockwell C that should be what that guy is for. And then of course on the driver's side you've got, so this is a, a selector and it says 60, 100, I believe 150. I want to say that's what you can go up to, but I'm just leaving it on 100. Here's the loading lever when you get it loaded and then the unloading. So we'll go through that and let's test a, test a piece here. Alright, so I got it all set up and it's reading about two hardness points lower uh, than what my test blocks are, so I'm going to have to probably go through and recalibrate it. I haven't recalibrated this thing ever, so uh, we'll just kind of go with that. But i got a couple things I'm going to test here. i got a little 22 bolt, and then just a random piece of uh, plate steel. I have no idea what it is. It's about an inch thick piece of plate. So, 
These are pretty simple to operate, these guys. I'm just going to lower this down under my thing here. Set that in the middle. Make sure everything's clean. You raise it up into the piece. So we want this big dial to go around three times and then this little dial is going to go one, two, three notches under this little red dot here. So we're going to go... I'm going the wrong way here. One, two, and then three. Close enough. We'll zero our indicator out there. And then on the side here I'm going to pull the loading lever. So it's a little lever that's sticking out. So I pull on it. Let it go about 30 seconds or so. So this stuff's pretty soft. So the numbers we're going to read here are the black numbers. And I'm thinking this thing's going to be around 20, maybe 15 hardness. You can see it's still creeping there. Usually doesn't creep more than about a half a half a tick mark there, or a full tick. But you can see your lever over here when it stops. So then we're going to unload it. And so our hardness here is it reads 5.5, but it's probably about six or seven. So pretty soft piece of steel there. And of course you'd want to do this two three times to make sure you got the right number so then we got our little dash there. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to swap out my, yeah, don't do that, I just did, swap out my anvil here. We're just going to test this little, it's a little center fire bolt, I have no idea what it's for but I'm sure it's not very hard. So I'm just going to lay that up in there, however we can get it, that'll be fine, Doesn't not a big deal, doesn't matter where we're testing it on. And then we'll bring it up and we will run it. Alright, so we got our bolt under there. And I'm going to spin it up so a big dial or big, uh, big needle three times. One, two, three. And pretty close there. And we're, our little needle's on the red dot here. So I'm just going to zero this guy out again. If I can see it with the shadow. Okay. And we're going to let it go here. So when we re release this by screwing this jack up, it loads our, lo our unloading lever. So then our loading lever is the one that releases it when we drop the pressure on the diamond there. So I'm going to pull this and it's going to release this and this will slowly come forward. So I'm going to release it here. We'll do a couple tests on this one. And I hold this one down because I'm not quite sure. I mean, it would go, but so you can see this lever here, the unloading lever. I would think this would be the loading, and this would be the unloading, but who am I? So this thing's going to end up being pretty soft too, which I kind of anticipated. So you usually go about 30 seconds or so, maybe a minute, but once this guy starts stops moving, you can usually stop it. So now we unload it. So I guess that would make sense that we're unloading it. The needle stopped moving. Now we're going to unload it and read our Rockwell hardness. So that's what our reading ended up being on this little bolt. It's approximately 10, give or take, probably, probably two, two higher than that, two points. Maybe a little less, but should be relatively close. So we'll test it one more spot here. All right, so when you're done testing, <clears throat> you unload this guy. And we'll see, we got a little dimple there. So I'll just move it over just a tiny little bit and we'll reload it here. So one, two, three. Zeroed out on mine. See now that we jacked it up, this guy loaded. Now we'll release it. Wait about 20, 30 seconds for it to stop moving. And we're probably gonna get about the same reading, if not a little less this time, which is interesting. So 
there we go. I'm gonna call that good. Look at that, we get about a two. <laughs> Not very good. Pretty soft stuff. So just out of curiosity, let's grab something that we know is hard. So here is an <clears throat> SK, 3 8 inch extension. Let's see what we get with this thing. One, two, three. I'll zero it out and let her fly. I would think that this thing should be f hardened fairly well. Give it about 15, 20, 30, however many seconds you want to wait until the lever stops dropping. There we go. Check it out. So there we go. About 40, which I would think that would kind of make sense because, um, you know, those are usually pretty hardened fairly well. So Rockwell 40, probably 42, 43, maybe a little higher, but that was a pretty good test real life test to kind of see what uh, just a random thing around the shop. Let's grab one more thing. <laughs> Alright, so what I got here is a little lathe jaw. I don't know, this is some random jaw I had sitting around from some lathe I had at one point in time, but I have no idea what it's for now. But Let's test this thing. I would assume this thing would be somewhere in the 60 plus range, but um, who knows. So let's check it out here. Crank her up. One, two, Oh, it's hard. Oh, no, just kidding. So I'll zero it out. And we'll do it one more time. Any bets? Any bets? Anybody? Anybody? I'm going to say 65. That's a pretty hefty guess, but we'll, we'll see what we get here. And off she goes. settle out here and we'll see what we get. I have to mess with this thing a little bit more and see what where my air is coming from because those those uh, calibration plates I got should be pretty spot on so I haven't messed there's settings inside here you can mess with it but the instructions they give you with these things are garbage and they don't tell you much of anything so I'm gonna have to basically go in there and try and figure it out myself but anyways any guesses any guesses anybody anybody all right here we go I'm gonna drop the hammer so I'm not cheating here on nobody. All right, here we go. See what we get. Oh, creeping up, creeping up. Oh, I went a little high. So this guy's reading 57.5. So probably a couple points higher than that, but 58 to 60-ish. So that was pretty close on my original guess, but kind of spot on with where you kind of think a hardened lathe jaw should be. So. All right, so there it is in all its glory, the Lizao Hayong Hardness Tester, Model HR 158. Uh, when I actually got this thing a year or two ago, they still sold these things, and I think they sold them around 1200 or 13 or 1400 bucks, something like that. I, of course, did not pay that for this one, because uh, otherwise I would not own it. <laughs> but, um, I don't know, it, it seems to work pretty good. Like I said, I haven't... We'll go through and calibrate it and get a run and spot on here, but it gives you a pretty good idea of what's going on. You know, if you're within a point or two, that's usually good enough for the stuff that I'm doing. The main reason I got this guy for myself is do hardness testing on receivers and bolts uh, for rifle work. Sometimes you get old Mausers, old not so much so Enfields, but you know Springfields and stuff. Their Springfields are pretty well known, but some of the Mausers are iffy. And they're not as popular as they used to be, but sometimes people still want them worked on or fixed or whatever. And then you go through and it's always a good idea to hardness test them to make sure that you actually have something that's safe to shoot. Hope you guys got something out of that. I don't know if I did or not, but yeah. There we go. After two years of sitting in my shop, I finally made a video on it. So if you guys want to hang around for one more minute, I'll show you 
the grand uh, tour of my new shop that's absolutely a mess right now, but we're, we're getting there. All right, so here it is. It's a mess. It's smaller than what I had before, but um, what I got going on here is quite a bit of stuff. This is actually about 300 square feet, which is a little bit smaller than I had before. Uh, between my two areas before I had more than that, but this is what I got now. So this is actually, actually an old barn that is in town. And what the plan is here is I got the electrical panel ran out here for new wiring. I'm going to start wiring this. I got to tip the building over because it's leaning a little bit. Um, we're leaning about three, four inches on the top. I got 14 foot sidewalls, although there's a second level up here. But I've got 14 foot sidewalls and it's about 23 feet up way to the peak there. So I got huge vaulted ceilings upstairs. And what I'm going to do is this is, all, this is a garage door here. And this will all get covered on the inside, insulated, covered with, uh, I got some old corrugated tin I'm going to put in. And then I've got lumber here for a stairwell that's actually going to go back there because the upstairs of this thing used to just be a hayloft, like an actual hayloft. Um, so it's kind of crazy. When we moved here, I put this garage door in, we poured a floor, and actually back in that corner there was the old um, feed trough for the horses. This, my house was built in 1915. This was a, a barn chicken coop right here. Um, on the other side was a carriage house and then upstairs was a hayloft. So in total I got about a thousand square feet between upstairs and downstairs and the, the other half of the garage there but this will be my main work area. Uh, so the stairwell up there so it'll be more practical and, and eventually my plan is to redo this whole thing and, and make it look nice and usable and all that good stuff. So What is that, you may say? <laughs> that big hunk of steel there. I actually bought that a few months back, too, and I haven't uh, been so busy with other things, I haven't gotten a chance to do this. This is my Klopp Metal Shaper, German-made, straight out of Germany. So I'm kind of looking forward to getting that guy running. Uh, it's been sitting for at least 30 years. The guy I bought it from uh, told me kind of the backstory on it, so it's caked in uh, dirt, a little grease, but everything underneath there looks really good. Um, nothing's broken on it and everything looks to be in pretty good shape. So I'm kind of excited to get that going. This will be my third shaper that I've owned, but this is by far the biggest shaper I've had. And I believe this is a Model 450 and uh, it's approximately a 17 inch stroke, I believe, or an 18 inch, 450 millimeters air the 450 model. So it's missing a couple little parts here and there, but that'll be a future video. I'll get that thing cleaned up and running. I've got some other projects in here. I've got another South Bend lathe to do. I've got uh, a million things. I got. I need like 14 people to help me do all this, but uh, for now, I'll get her done. So if you like this video, be sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Please comment below. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know what you think, how quick I should get that guy done <laughs> and the uh, South Bend lathe. So, see you guys next time. My wife asked me if my head would fit in that thing. Not sure what she meant by that. <laughs>